Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galan Bodybuilding. Mountain. Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a fitness scam that's going on. And I don't think it's going on on purpose in some cases, but in a lot of cases, I think that branding is getting in the way of truth. Welcome to The Rock Gym. Here you can get a workout. Chances are here is also in your neighborhood. All you gotta do is look on the ground. If you see rocks, lift them. No coordination involved, no specific exercise form involved. All you gotta do is send $399,000 to naturalgalandbodybuilding.com and you get a membership to the Natural Rock Gym. This is the most exciting opportunity of your entire life. Oh yeah. So make sure you sign up now and get that deal, the early bird special, which is $398,000 for your semi-free, not, not really free membership to the Natural Galant Bodybuilding Rock Gym. Oh yeah. And what I mean by this is that there are a lot of people who become experts, you know, quotation marks in their field. And then what they do is they turn all of their experience and all of their expertise into one variable, one oversimplistic explanation of what they know to be true. Sometimes this is happening because people are misinterpreting what the person is saying. And I've had that happen a lot with a lot of the videos I've made. I've, I've had people misinterpret my message from what I'm saying, which is fine. That, that does happen. And what I find a lot of people do is that they take one variable from some path, you know, whether it's fixing cars or whether it's building a house or whether it's a martial arts technique or whether it's weight training, they'll take one variable out of that whole thing, like one piece of it and say, this is the single handed reason why results happen or why the house gets built or, or whatever. And, and this sounds very flashy. It's very clickable in social media time, right? It's a very clickable sort of thing. When you just give somebody a simple answer to a complicated, situation right hey are you waiting for this bench john yeah are you well you can jump in or whatever f minute, you know okay. i'm only doing two more sets anyway but you know whatever sounds good i'm not trying to monopolize your you know the gym it's okay uh, I, I i was i was kind of like i was kind of confused this is not a tanning bed so i wasn't yeah, sure what you're pointing yeah. over here <laughs> the tanning bed's over there I don't, you, you actually think that you need to, i didn't even know you're trained i was just like <laughs> this is confusing it's like the tan the tan is what's bringing out the ripples if i had a nice tan my ripples would look way better Oh, I'd have so many ripples if I was tan like Don. Oh. You get that workout from Suzanne Summers? Is that a Suzanne <laughs> Summers sort of thing? You're going to break out the thigh master and the yeah, wake shake? The shake wake pretty soon? <laughs> See, I knew, I knew you didn't do anything besides the tanning bed. This is all just a show. I'm waiting for you to leave and then I'll just start chatting. With you you don't even know what you're doing here. <laughs> but the truth is, more often than not, People are being manipulated by their need for an oversimplistic explanation to a situation. They're, they're being taken advantage of, basically. So where this applies right now is in volume, where some people say you only need so many repetitions per week in order to grow muscle, period. They don't stipulate any intensities around these repetitions. They don't stipulate uh, the type of volume, if, if it's partial range of motion, if it's extreme range of motion, if it's isolation exercise or compound, uh, you know, and, and if, if the rest in between sets is different, they, they don't stipulate that, whether it's a 30 second rest in between sets or whether it's two or three or four or five minutes, right? And the problem is with this is that a repetition is not a repetition. So somebody asked me in the comments, how many repetitions per week should they be doing in order to gain muscle? And that is impossible to answer because if I lift a feather for a thousand reps a week, I'm not going to grow any muscle, right? Because the feather has next to no intensity. You see what I'm saying? So the intensity of the repetition matters and there's a certain threshold of intensity that is necessary to get to before a rep even counts as a repetition for hypertrophy. And one could say for strength, that threshold might be higher. You might have to go more intense. A lot of times you do have to go a bit more intense anyway, in order to get strength. Of course, 
most people think you have to go way more intense or way more heavy in order to get strength. They'll just do one rep maximums on their bench press. They'll just lift all they can for one rep because they're trying to gain strength. And, and that would be a false leap of logic. That would be too much intensity, which leads mostly to injuries. But what I'm trying to say is that intensity is a very necessary variable to look at when you talk about how many reps does it take to grow muscle in a week. And each person is going to have a different threshold. All right, just three sets. This is the last set, this feels good. Just a nice pump. Just enough to look good, but not so good to invoke jealousy from all the members in the gym. So yeah, you gotta find the balance. I'm gonna do some traditional bench presses. I know it's not like the thigh master like Don's doing over there. So what I find disturbing, and you might find this disturbing too. <laughs> what I find is disturbing is that people want to turn their brain off, turn their awareness off, and they just want to get a cookie cutter method to just turn their brain off, turn their awareness off, not even care about what they're feeling or, or sensing, you know, and just do like, okay, I, I did the prescribed 20 reps per week or, or 100 reps per week or, or whatever, or 1,000 reps per week, and, and now I, I did enough to gain muscle. And what I'm trying to say is that for people who wish to evolve and become great natural bodybuilders or great athletes, your awareness has to evolve to include the smaller details and smaller variables of situations. But as you get more advanced, you'll start to look at these variables and take them more seriously. You'll realize that if, I, if you do a set of 12 to 15 repetitions, it is intense. When you take that set to failure, it is intense on certain parts of your system, but it will be intense in a different way than a five rep to failure set. So I think you know where I'm going with this, right? I mean, you will have to discern what that difference is based on experiencing and also observing over the next day or two after you do this and then see what is going on with the body. And you'll notice that when you use too heavy a weight too often, you might actually go down in strength or you might feel like you're starting to get injured or you get joint inflammation because we know heavier weight's gonna be harder on the joints. But it is necessary in order to stimulate some of those fiber types or those muscles that are responsible for strength. Uh, some other people might wanna put it in a language like your nervous system or your motor units get fired more with heavier weight. But again, we're back down to the simple truth that a repetition is not a repetition. If you're doing a fuller range of repetition, one could argue that is also different than an intense partial rep where you're trying to concentrate the intensity on one area instead of dispersing it over many areas throughout the range of motion. So you can disperse the intensity or you can concentrate the intensity, but either way, we're back to the simple truth that a rep is not a rep. So I think this oversimplicity of repetitions has went on into volume as well, where people will say, oh, if you do 10 sets of volume per week, you're, you're done, or 20 sets, and they won't talk about the quality of those sets as mattering, where the quality of those sets does matter. It does make a difference in what's gonna happen. Another day at the gym. Another day. Another day to crush the weights. Another day. Nah, maybe I'll go home. Maybe I'm gonna go home. Yep, yeah, let's do that. And the other strange thing about volume is some people measure it by poundages. They'll say, oh, you're only supposed to lift this much pounds per week based on your one rep maximum. And, and when you go above or beyond that, then you've gone too much or if less than that, you're, you're not doing enough. But if we're going by poundage, and then we say repetitions are all that matter. If somebody's doing 500 pounds for three reps and, and, and their total for the week, let's just be simple, their total for the week is 1500 pounds, that three reps was more than enough. But this person's saying, no, no, I'm supposed to do my you know, 700 or 800 reps a week. 
you see? So the volume gets all mixed up. So in the end, the best way to measure volume is to take the muscle to absolute exhaustion or, or close to his exhaustion. Once you start to see in your sets that your strength just dips off where say you're doing 12 reps in a set. And then, you know, by the time the last set is going on, you're only getting six or seven reps. Like you basically you know, lost about 40 to 50% of your repetitions and then don't train the muscle again until it's recovered. And that will give you an idea of where your set volume is for say a bro split or a three day split. And then from there, you can start to get an idea of if you wanna train more frequently, the amount of sets that you might have to cut back on. So you, you might be doing half the sets or a, or a third of the sets in order to train a two day split or, or so forth. So the main dictating factor here is your awareness. You're paying attention to what is happening and how your body is responding. It's like a conversation back and forth. It's like throwing the ball and then the ball gets thrown back to you and you have to wait and watch and then catch the ball when it gets thrown back to you. But it's not gonna be something as simple as somebody just giving you a recipe and then, okay, that's it. That's the simple truth of training for you. If you do this, you're never going to become a master and you're never gonna find out exactly what the best amount of reps per week or sets or volume or weight is for you. So you are an experiment or two away from discovering something about your body and your constitution. And the more experiments that you conduct and the more observation that you engage in, you will start to get the answers that you're looking for instead of just, you know, asking people. So if you're going to ask a question though, if you're going to ask somebody a question, it would be important for you to outline parameters around that variable you're talking about, right? Like say, hey, uh, say I'm, you know, training with 85% of my one rep max. How many days a week do you think I should do that? that? That would probably be a better question rather than saying, hey, how many reps a week should I do for a body part in order to grow? You know, so there's no such thing as a stupid question, but there are questions which will help you achieve what you're looking for faster. That's, that's really what I'm going to say. And remember your awareness is going to save you way more than anybody answering some question on the internet. That's, that's, that's for sure. Right? So I hope this helps out in our training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Mountain, mountain.